For over 50 years, the province of Quebec in Canada has had an independence movement seeking to separate from the rest of the country. But why? What drives this desire for sovereignty among many people? Let's start with some context. Quebec is the only predominantly French-speaking province in Canada, with French as the sole official language. With over 8 million people, Quebec makes up around 23% of Canada's population. But culturally and linguistically, Quebec has always felt distinct from English Canada. This sense of difference stems back to the 17th century when French settlers first arrived in Quebec and established agricultural communities along the St. Lawrence River. As waves of British settlers and immigrants transformed Canada, Quebec held on to its French Catholic roots and language. By the 1960s, Quebec had developed a strong sense of national identity separate from the rest of English Canada. This is when the modern Quebec sovereignty movement was born. Known as the Quiet Revolution, Quebec underwent rapid modernization and secularization in the 1960s that challenged the once dominant influence of the Catholic Church. A new nationalist spirit emerged among Francophone citizens who felt their language and culture were under threat of assimilation. One of the key catalysts for Quebec's independence movement was the adoption of the Official Languages Act in 1969. While this legislation recognized both English and French as Canada's official languages, it didn't fully satisfy Quebec's aspirations for cultural autonomy. This led to the introduction of the controversial Bill 101 in 1977, which made French the official language of Quebec. The passing of Bill 101 ignited a nationwide debate and had far-reaching consequences. On one hand, proponents argued that protecting the French language was essential for preserving Quebec's cultural fabric. On the other hand, opponents believed it undermined individual rights and threatened national unity. This contentious issue further fueled the flames of Quebec's independence movement. The establishment of the Quebec Party in 1968 reflected this rising Quebec nationalism. Led by René Lévesque, the Quebec Party advocated for independence, arguing Quebec had a distinct society that could only truly thrive as a sovereign nation. Two referendums were later held, in 1980 and 1995, on whether Quebec should secede from Canada, but both failed though the second vote was decided by under 1% of the ballots. While bilingualism has increased in Canada, the use of French has declined sharply outside of Quebec. Many Quebec nationalists argue this threatens the long-term survival of the French language in North America, given Quebec is the sole majority French jurisdiction. Preserving and promoting the French facts in government, education, and business remains a top priority for sovereignists. There is also an economic argument made. As a sovereign country, Quebec nationalists believe the province could pursue its trade relationships internationally instead of having policies largely dictated by Ottawa. With strong cultural ties to France and economic ties possible with the rest of Canada, sovereignists argue an independent Quebec could still be prosperous. What would happen to the province's finances and trade relationships if it did separate? As one of the ten provinces, Quebec benefits greatly from being part of Canada's single market. About three-quarters of Quebec's international trade is with other Canadian provinces. This includes $63 billion worth of goods and services exported to the rest of Canada in 2019. Quebec also relies on transfer payments from Ottawa that totaled over $13 billion in the 2020-2021 fiscal year. This funding helps support important social programs in the province, like healthcare and education. Losing access to this integrated economic zone and federal funding would undoubtedly cause short-term economic disruption for Quebec. Now. Let's look at a real-world example of what economic separation might look like in practice. When the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union in 2016, it sparked fears of severe economic consequences. In the years since, the UK has faced higher trade costs, 
job losses, and a declining currency, all impacts economists had predicted. The UK is still negotiating new trade deals years after Brexit, showing how drawn out and complex unwinding decades of economic integration can be. Some studies estimate Brexit will lower UK economic output by 4% in the long run, compared to if it had stayed in the EU. This real example from across the Atlantic gives us a sense of the challenges an independent Quebec may face in separating economically from Canada. On the other hand, some smaller countries and territories have gained independence and thrived. When Singapore separated from Malaysia in 1965, it had a population of just 1.9 million and few natural resources. Yet through smart economic policies, it grew to become one of the richest countries in Asia today, with a GDP per capita of over $64,000. Singapore's success was built on low taxes, limited regulations, fighting corruption, and developing a skilled workforce. Some argue an independent Quebec could follow a similar path of free market policies and attract foreign investment if it separates. The province already has a highly educated population and is a gateway to North America, assets that could help drive future prosperity. Quebec's economic prowess, particularly in sectors like aerospace and technology, has led some to envision a self-sufficient Quebec. Proponents of independence argue that the province could better control its economic destiny outside the Canadian Federation. However, Critics contend that the economic ties between Quebec and the rest of Canada are too intertwined to sever. Of course, there are also those in Quebec who prefer the status quo or increased autonomy within Canada. However, the independence movement remains influential, especially in times of tension between the provincial and federal governments over language laws or economic policies. So while full sovereignty may not be imminent, Debates over Quebec's place in Canada are sure to continue for years to come. In summary, Quebec's distinct French culture and language, sense of national identity, and debates over its political and economic autonomy are at the core of the province's independence movement. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.